take, just taken this moment to apologize for all who have not been watching the beginning of our service because I have neglected to turn the camera on. I have just turned it on and welcome you to that moment when we are all standing for the collect. Most merciful God, who by the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, delivered and saved the world, grant that by faith in him who suffered on the cross, we may triumph in the power of his victory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for our readings.
please stand for the gospel. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it. And those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there my servant will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honour. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour. No. It is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven, I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, the voice has come for your sake not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. This is the gospel of God. Pray to thee. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable unto thee this day, my Lord and Saviour. Amen. Do you please be seated. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. But welcome, as I said at the beginning of the service, to Passion Sunday. As Jill mentioned in the knot to the pew sheet this week, where has Lent gone this year? We've done so much, we've celebrated so much in coming back to church during Lent that it almost seems as if we haven't really prepared ourselves appropriately for Easter necessarily. Still, we come to the beginning of a Passion and we are reminded of the church here. And we are reminded of the place that God holds in our hearts. Or are we? Is it that easy? Yep, God is in the heart of every Christian, isn't he? Well, the question we should in all honesty be asking ourselves at this holy time of the year is just that. Is he? Do we let him? Well, that is what the Lenten challenge really is. Not, can I live without chocolate again? Can I do without biscuits or gin or whatever? Good that a little abstinence might be for us, and hopefully to remind us just a little of our faith. And by the way, Sarah and I enjoy a little dark chocolate after every lunch. But our readings today really drive the question, beginning with the Jeremiah. And one could ask, what has Jeremiah got to do with us? After all, he is prophesying to Israel and Judah. We 
going to go into the history now, but two different areas, nations, peoples, already sadly split on religious lines, but still one God. But Jeremiah foretells a new beginning, a different way of being God, or more appropriately, a different way of being the people of faith. No longer will God be in the temple, separate, an item, somewhere to go to meet God. But Jeremiah says, like a husband or a spouse, separate. God will from henceforth be of the people, of the individuals. I will put my law within them, I will write it on their hearts. I will be their God. No longer will the people need to be taught of God, for God will be of the people. There will no longer be a need to find God in the temple. God becomes omnipresent in the people, if you like. And that foretelling relates beautifully to the later coming of the Son of God, most assuredly of the people as well as of God. But the Greeks, uh, Greeks is often used to refer to people anywhere but in, uh, uh, of, my apologies, of anywhere but of Judaism. The world further north wasn't much known beyond Greece after all. But the Greeks come asking to see this Jesus asking to see this Jesus. Already we can perceive a difference. God is present in the hearts of all believers. Yet these must see Jesus. We don't know why. Their purpose is not recorded. Nor are there questions when the disciples bring them to him. The commentary I was reading the other day was referring to the need to see celebrity. To the Greeks, Jesus may have just been as a celebrity. Maybe they heard the stories, the miracles, the cures, the feedings. Maybe they were hoping to see something themselves. Maybe they wanted his autograph. But there hangs the problem. And Jesus responds to their presence with the powerful words we now can understand 2,000 years later, but which may well at that moment have sounded really quite bizarre. In simple terms, Jesus knows his future, at least his future over the next couple of weeks. And he knows why, to glorify God and to bring all people to him. People who have fundamentally forgotten that gift of God from so long ago. That gift of God written on the hearts of all people, rather overtaken by the law of the lifelong list of rules and regulations that make a good Jew. We too have lists of regulations that we follow too. We see them as making us good citizens, good people, and most importantly, good Christians. And we come to church, or today sit and watch and listen to a service of worship online. But and here is a real challenge of Lent. Do we come here to visit God in his house? Is the image of God in Jesus that we see all around us the celebrity that we come along to worship? Or do we come to worship the God who resides not here, but in the hearts of every one of us? Because if God is a celebrity, a, if you like, some sort of separate being like a spouse, then we can just as easily walk away, as far too many do these days, both from God and from spouses. But if we can dive deep 
into our consciousness, consciousness, search and find God there, then there is no leaving. Whatever life throws at us, it is thrown at God within too, and thereby hangs a strength, the gift that God offers us to be with us, whatever the world, whatever life brings us. It will never be as difficult as that which Jesus faced in these coming two weeks. Well, this Lent and all year, it is not may God be with you, but may God may you find God within you. Let us stand to reaffirm that faith we have, that place of God written on our hearts. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten from God, of one being with the Father, through him all things are heaven. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead, for the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated or kneel for our intercessions. Lord Jesus Christ, you were lifted up on the cross for us and for our salvation. Help us to triumph over evil and to do good. To give ourselves to you as you give yourself for us. And to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Amen. Following prayers in response to the Lord in us, is the Lord graciously given. Lord of the Church, we thank you for calling us to join you. May we bring others to know you, in knowing you to love you, and in loving you to serve you. Whom to serve is perfect freedom. Guide and strengthen the mission and outreach of your people, and help us to 
face up to the needs and the challenges that lie ahead of us. Lord, hear us. Lord, to grace us. Lord of the whole world, we thank you for your wonderful creation and for the goodness that lies at the heart of all things. Help mankind to live more gently on the face of the earth and to adapt what we do so that your creation is no longer endangered. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord hear graciously hear us. Lord of the nations, we thank you for stable governments and generosity between nations. And we pray for places where there is trouble and conflict. Remembering today the people and government of Myanmar, the people of Syria, where the civil war has lasted for over 10 years. We pray for all refugees. We pray too for the manufacture and fair, distri fair distribution of COVID vaccines around the world. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Loving Father, we pray for the many who are uncertain about the future of their work and livelihood, and especially for the businesses in this town and on this island. We give thanks for the food banks and the help they provide to so many families. We ask your blessing on all they have helped in this past week, and on everyone whose generosity enables this work. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. Today we pray for all who are ill, using the list in our privileges and also remembering those we know and love who are on our hearts this day. Rachel Simmons, Ellen Hurst, at the hospital, Drew Dennis, Pat Vesper, Sheila and Alan Baker, James Jones, Myra, Julie Beebe, Carol Bishop, and Betty Clark. From Maureen Lewis, Peter L, Michael L, Joe Tenney, and Ingrid Watt. We pray for their healing and that they may know the power of your loving presence. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord, graciously hear us. And finally, we pray for all those who have recently died, especially Jill Smith, Robert Cooper, Heidi Ray, and David Guy, and the many thousands who have died because of the coronavirus. May they rest in your peace and rise with my Savior Lord. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Mercy.
blessed one of God, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, for our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Would you stand for the peace? Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and we share his peace. So as we're able, let's share the peace with each other. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let's share that with each other as we can. Jesus, true mind, Jesus, true mind and great life, have given yourself for the world to my view. Let us share your death and passion. Make us perfect in your love. Amen. Amen. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For as the time of his passion and resurrection draws near, the whole world is called to acknowledge his holy majesty. The power of the life giving cross reveals the judgment that has come upon the world and the triumph of Christ crucified. He is the victim who dies no more, the Lamb once slain, who lives forever, our advocate in heaven, to plead our cause, exalting us there to join with angels and archangels, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord. 
Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you have taught us that what we do for the least of our brothers and sisters, we do for you. Give us the will to be the servant of others, as you were the servant of all, and gave up your life and died for us, that are alive and reign now and forever. Amen. We pray together, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Could you stand to receive God's blessing? Christ crucified draw you to himself to find in him a sure ground for faith, a firm support for hope, and the assurance of sins forgiven. And the blessing of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit be with you and those you love, today and forever. Amen. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Okay.